put the mics back. I actually went in here and started doing, you know, writing out. You know, they wanted just to do it a hundred times. I got to 17. Barakim <laughs> Habaim. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do they say it again? I don't know. That. Baruchim Habaim. Baruch. Welcome. That that was in each one, I believe, of the Hebrew books. Um, not this series. Uh, Linda Mopskin's series. Has has a uh, let me have uh, they changed the book? Does it look different now? Here. Second edition. Which edition do you have? Third edition. Oh. That one might be a little different. We'll have to see. Oh. Okay. There. Baruchim Habaim. Oh. It's blessed are the coming ones of the ones who come. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So uh, let's open in prayer. And uh, John, would you open for us, please? Here. Thank you. Okay, let's, um, I don't know if you want, we've done our songs for so many years. Yeah. I think we can move on. Yeah. Um, so how this much different book, is my book going to be from yours? I don't know. Oh, no. I don't know what they have changed. I guess we will find out. And your workbook, hmm. we will see. Okay, now, what I normally do with this book, after people have finished the first four classes, because this one starts in the beginning, mm -hmm. yeah. we go rather, <coughs> excuse me, rather quickly, in fact, the first four chapters possibly today. Yeah. yeah. Um, but first of all, I want to give us a little nugget, and that nugget is found in Psalm 37 and verses 10 and 11. Uh, here we go. Uh, what did you say, Psalm 37. 10 and 11. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, you will diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. Uh, I'm going to switch translations here. <clears throat> but the humble or the meek will inherit the land and will delight themselves in abundant prosperity. The word is anab, the word for meek. And of course, so you gonna show me how to spell that, or are you gonna just? Tell me? I always fight with these things. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> anab is spelled I, and then nun, and. Uh, 
a valve. Okay. Yes, a knob. A knob. And it <clears throat> it's certainly not weak, but it can be meek, humble, poor, or even afflicted. These are all definitions. Or, or afflicted. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> here, one of uh, the King James has the meek will inherit the earth. And of course, that corresponds to the Beatitudes in Matthew, <clears throat> or like NASB has the humble. And Moses was the meekest man in all the earth and certainly wasn't weak. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> some people think of weak when you say meek, but he wasn't. He was very strong and, of it course, be a, a courageous. Better, a better, um, one, uh, than that. one writer said God dependent, and I like that. I like that too. God dependent. And uh, <clears throat> another verse with uh, this word is Psalm 10 and verse 12. Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up your hand. Do not forget now here, NASB translates it, the afflicted. Do not forget the afflicted. So you'll find this word, a knob, translated in all these ways. And uh, <clears throat> of course, I think of what Yeshua said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Now, does he use a knob for his meek? Or does well, he use a different that's word? Greek. <laughs> oh, that's Greek. That's right, that's Greek. If it were, but see, the thing is, um, in the Beatitudes, he uses... Uh, he uses meek. Oh, I did the wrong thing. So if we were to look, let's see, the Beatitudes, is that five? Beatitudes, okay, yes. Okay, um, now the NASB uses the word gentle, praus. Um, let's see. See, come unto me. Is that is that six? I'm trying to remember. The older I get, I can't remember the references. <laughs> anyway, uh, I was going to see if they use the same word. It's amazing how many times in Psalm 37 says inherit the earth. Yes, yes. Okay. Mm. Here it is. Matthew 11, 28. Okay, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, take my yoke, for I am, now it's a different word there, what they say. For I am, um, oh no, here it is, it is the same word, praus, and let me see what Hebrew word they just barely they hanging use. on the Hebrew. I don't think I could handle Greek. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Greek is harder, isn't it? No. Uh, no, in, in, nope. in many ways, Hebrew, Hebrew is harder. Hebrew is harder. Um, yeah, Greek has all those 
tenses and declensions <laughs> in the vocabulary, but it's just a more European language. And some of the words you recognize even from English. Nah. Ah, it, it uses a knob. Does it? For the for the take my yoke upon you uh -huh. and learn of me, for I am meek. The Hebrew New Testament uses anav, the meek and lowly in heart. Mm. I got a question. What? Mm. Your sweet, dear husband. Yes. Pastor Richard said yesterday that we <laughs> use the, uh, the ash. If I'm said properly, Ashkenazi. Ashkenazi calendar. But yet, we teach Hebrew of the Sephardic. Ashkenazi. No, we're not using Ashkenazi. Well, in some ways, in some ways it is because, for example, the Tsere, we say A. This series says A. And in America, they say A. But in Israel, the Tzere is E. But see, when we first started, four years ago, or whatever yeah. I started, I was told it was Sephardic. And yeah. for the book and stuff, we were studying Sephardic out of the book. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was confused. Are we, which are we? So well, he said it, it's the Ashkenazi calendar. I know, I know, but yeah. I couldn't understand why do we do that calendar and then study the Because I don't know, that's just the one that that America uses. <clears throat> okay, okay. So if, if just... Sere, if uh, Sephardic Sere is E, e. what's e. they hold? It's E, e. Also, it's, all, e. Yeah. it's also it's E. Also it's one e. short and one's long. Uh, <laughs> and, and it? Yeah. Um, e. E. Actually, they're short because the the Sarah Yod is long, mm -hmm. and we're going to get to that okay. in this. Okay, so much for the um, nugget. And let me get out of here. Sarah Yod would be long. Yes, Sarah Yod um, and Herrick Yod is long. Now I read the this. Here, the introduction was this part, part here. I can't think I read all that. Did I? I don't remember reading that they were. Now, what are they teaching in this book? Sephardic or Ashkenazi? I would think that it's the same. Okay. Um, because the pronunciation is the biggest difference, isn't it? Yeah, and of course, modern Hebrew is a little different yeah. than biblical yeah. Hebrew. I mean, they have different ways of saying things, and they don't attach all of the things that they do in biblical Hebrew. Okay, the first chapter, <coughs> we have the alphabet. Now, I am not concerned that you know exactly how to transliterate all the different sounds. I know in the workbook, they have you doing that. And, um, you know, I, I'm not concerned about that. But, um, so let's see. They have I in an Aleph and silent. Yeah. They say I. Look. They say sometimes. I know. Yeah. I, I know. No. Ah, it, it, I know. This is silent. silent. You're saying the vowel. Yeah, okay. You're saying the vowel. But this it is used sometimes. to be. It used to be a guttural. Mm. Right. It used to it be what? A guttural. Oh. Something, down, mm, mm. something like that. But it's no more. I mean, now it's just silent. And um, okay, then we get into the vowels. Now the vowels. Uh, look, I'm on page nine, but I'm not sure yours is going to be the same. Okay. Okay. Talks about long vowels. 
Are you on yes. page nine? That's page nine. Oh, wow. See that? Yeah. It's We're different. Here. Okay. Um, Let me go to... The short, you have the short vowels, the long vowels. The long vowels of the A class are commence, sere is the E class, and the O class is the holo. Yes. So you have long vowels, and then you have short vowels, the patak, segol, hirik, Hametz Hatuf, and that actually says a long O, and then Kibbutz. Okay, help me with something here too, ma'am. What? Okay, because we write the the Kamatz or Kamets like that. Mm -hmm. That's how we write it. Right. And then there is this has always looked like that in the book to me. Mm -hmm. And actually, Melissa was. Saying I wasn't doing it right by doing the T, you know. So it's got the little circle on. It. I said, well, then this this. It depends what printer. Now this right here looks like this. Now is that what I'm seeing? Commence hot tough. Hot tooth. What's the difference? What's what's this? A line with a dot in it? No, it's not a line with a dot. It connects. It looks like. Yeah, it's it's more I like a T. <clears throat> yeah, and again, which should I use? That's what I want to know. Which should I use? Is Just, this the Kamatz uh, Kamatz Hatuf? Is that it? Yeah, and I always say Kamatz because that's the way I see. That's the way they say it there. Kamatz Hatuf. And it has a. Now see, they're saying O as in bottle. Um, but we usually do, now I have here a long O. I really don't see that there's no difference between the comments and the comments that you. No, not in writing. And it's the rule, it's the rules that you have to learn when there's only certain times a commence hatu is used. For example, the word wisdom, chokma, chokma. It's chokma. Yeah, chokma. It is a commence hatu. It's not a commence, just a commence. Is that C-H? Well, they have H here, but um, All right. They just have H A T U F. Oh, well, what did you say it was? A commence hatuf. Is wisdom? Oh, wisdom is hokma. Yeah. That's what I was wanting to write. Was hokma. Oh, hok. Yeah, I think that's a chet. And then a commence. Oh boy. That's okay. And I think it's a cough. And then a shba and a mem and a kamets hay, I think. Yes. I can look it up in the back. Okay, how to hold this thing and put something up. <laughs> That's why I wanted to see. Um, Yep, there it is. Yeah, that was right. A chet. a chet, and then a kamets hatuf. It looks like a kamets, and then a kaf, and a shaba, and a mem, mm -hmm. and a kamets hay. Chok ma, wisdom. Sheen in there. Oh, what did you say? I said a shabbat. Oh. <laughs> okay. 
underneath the calf is a shiva. Okay. Yeah. Next oh, okay. Oh, that's okay. right. Okay. Okay. Anyway, um, so that's a little different. And um, yeah, see here. And it may be in Israel. I don't know. They have hirik. They have as an i. See, in Israel, the, just the plain hirik is an i. Whereas in the first four books that we had, it's a long e. Yeah, I always, I never bought that. <laughs> I always think about it. Was, maybe sometimes, but a lot of times it's e. Okay, and so then you have the reduced vowels. Those are ones with the shiva. You have the hatef patak, hatef sigil, hatef commence. And um, so all of the reduced have got the hatef. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. And again, your hatef commence is a long o. Commit. Actually, oh, and then you have your long, short, and reduced vowels, and they do it by uh, class, the A, E, I, O, and U. Okay, let's see, anything else that we need to go over? And vowel letters are written in the A. No, if you hear, if you hear, Red is going to differ by Ashkenazi and Sephardic quite a bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pronunciation. Right. In fact, the Ashkenazi, they've really got their, they've got their, their own <laughs> dialect. Okay. Um, and you have your vowels with a yod, your vowels with a hey, vowels with a yod. And um, okay, full writing and defective, we know about that. Okay, the, that was uh, two dot ten in mine. Oh. Two oh. dot ten. And um, mine's two dot twelve is defective writing. Oh, okay. okay. Is that defective writing is what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. now, then it goes over the Shiva. And the Holom, where the Holom does double duty. Okay, the Tagesh Forte. Now, <clears throat> one thing about this book um, is that it emphasizes when you have a degesh in a letter, then it's like transliteration. You would double that letter. And for example, if you had a degesh in a letter that has a schwa under it, then you would pronounce it. Um, I was telling one of the classes in the blessing, uh, Richard usually says Hamed Barak, which that is an acceptable pronunciation, or Ham Barak. You know, I've heard it both ways. But like Hamed Barak, see, it's, it's spelled the same way in Hebrew, except that there's a Degesh in the Mem. And if there's a Degesh in a letter, even though it has a Shiva under it, see, normally the Shiva uh, in the middle of a word is silent. Mm -hmm. But if you have a letter with a Degesh Forte above it, then it's vocal. And that would be the uh, like Hamebara. The rule says that when you make a word definite and add hey, you know, you add the hey and the 
uh, patak, that you put a degesh in the next letter. But okay. this... Now, see, that blew my mind. Okay. I'm, I'm not following you with my ears. I you double it. it. Okay. That was in the first book. No, second book. Okay. Okay. For example, here you have ha, mm -hmm. and you want to say, the king. Yeah. So you say ha melek, but you put the hay with the pa talk, then you put a men with a degesh. So they're saying to double it? Yeah, you, you always double it. Yeah. However, when it's a mem, mm -hmm. and this book brings it out, I don't remember where, but this book says sometimes the mem does not take the degesh. That's why you find people pronouncing it humbarak or humbarak. If you were okay, right. this is Dagesh Forte. Uh, this has to. Right? Yeah, right. Hamele. It does not. It does not affect. It only affects it if it has a shva. It doesn't affect it. See, um, look for example. <laughs> They're all the same. Yeah, you leave it all, then it dries yeah. up. Okay, look at Hashem. Hashem. See, again, the rule is you put a hay and a patak and then a degesh forte. If you were to transliterate this, it actually would be like this. Hashem. The Degesh Forte means you are doubling that letter. So it doesn't, in normal uh, speech, you can't tell. You know, and they say it so fast. The only time you can tell is if there's a shva involved because then the shva is vocal when you double it. See, sometimes you'll find ha me vorak, you'll find it with a shva. And in that, uh, I mean, you find a degesh in the mem, and other times not. When it has a degesh in the mem, the correct way of pronouncing it is hamen, barach. Because that's actually the rule. You're supposed to put the hay and the patak and then a degesh in the first letter, hamelek. But, you know, in regular conversation, you can't hear. You can't hear that. Okay, let's move on. Uh, okay, chapter three talks about accents, and uh, normally, again, the accent is on the last syllable, and um, I think, you know, when you're teaching your class, to me, um, it's helpful, Judy, for them to put the syllable marks. That's, I've already told them about that. Yeah, because that's what that's how I was taught to put the syllable marks. To it me. really helps to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, John, mm -hmm. look at now. Mine is three point five. Three point five. Yes. Do you see that? And huka. See the two kuts. 
Huka. Oh, it's over here on the next page. Yes, on the next page. I, page 20 is what I have. Okay. And uh, so that, that shows you um, that shows you what the happens yeah. when you uh, have that Degesh Forte. Okay, then um, it talks about in the God Kafat, remember the Begad Kafat letters um, are those that are in that word, Begad Kafat, and uh, you have the Lene and Forte. Lene's are only Begad Kafat letters, and they are when the, it's the first letter of a word or the first word, I mean the first letter after a silent Shema. So um, you have, for example, down at number two, you have Malka. You have the Kaf has a silent Shema before it. So that is a a cup, not a See the difference? Uh, do it again. As it's mal ka. Mal ka. Mal ka. The shva is silent. But see, the, the degesh in the cough is a degesh lene, not a forte, because it comes after a silent shva. A forte means it's doubled, right. and it's not doubled here. Lanes are only the letters that are in the the bet, bet, gimel, dalit, kaf, pei, and tav, the god kafat. Those are the only ones that and can be lanes. However. The Begad Kifat letters can be forte, can have a forte Degesh. Um, for example, uh, let's see. Let me think. Oh, if I were to say, for example, a bite, again, I'm making house definite. And so I put it to Gesh in here. A bite. Okay. So this one here is not a Degesh Lene. It's a Forte. And if I were to write it out, transliteration, it would have to be like this, a bite. Um, don't remember, I would do like yeah. this. <laughs> yeah, E-A-Y, whatever, a bite. Um, but you have both bets, you have both Bs. Uh, but if you were to just have bite, if you were to just have bite, this is a lene. It's not doubled. See, it's at the beginning of a word. It's lene when it's at the beginning of a word or after a silent shva. Um, but it in other in pay. Is, isn't that what? No, I'm getting no you're down. thinking of the bump rule. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, the God Kifat. Yes, okay. all of those. So if it begins at the first of a word, it's a lene. Yes. Uh, okay. Let's uh, let's move on here. And Shiva and syllabification. Um, 
Again, you have the rules of Shabbat. First, if you have two in the middle, first one's silent, second one's vocal. Now notice, uh, under, under Shabbat and syllabification, 2C, it says a Shabbat under any consonant with a Degesh forte is vocal, as in Hamelakim. See that one? See, then you would have two mems. See, the other book series did not teach that. We just said, ha, you know, you had one there in the middle, Ham Lachim. And actually, in Israel, you really can't hear that double. They would probably say it more like Ham Lachim. Uh, they say it so fast that even yeah. if it were doubled. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. You can't hear it. Okay. Now they're saying, it, look at D, a Shiva after an unaccented long vowel is vocal, as in kotavim. Kotavim. So there's where you have to learn your long and short vowels. I don't know for our purposes, you know, we are learning Hebrew to study God's word. Right. We're not learning modern Hebrew and not necessarily to speak it, although you know, it's nice to be able to pronounce it. But um, so I might draw your attention to it, you know, when we're doing it. But I'm not going to test you on something like that because I want you to learn the vocabulary and the rules in order to read in order to read it and understand it. Oh, it's got rules about the comments and comments about that. <laughs> A bunch of rules. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Comments and the comments of two. Yes. And there's where you find, um, uh, yeah. It's only in a closed, unaccented syllable. So it wouldn't be a mem. No, it, it's talking about the kamets hatuf. Uh, see, there you have hokma. Now, uh, see, with hokma, again, if you remember that this is the way I've had to learn this, because to me, it's so complicated. Um, then I remember the word wisdom. And hokmah, the accents on the N. Okay, so the first is a closed, unaccented syllable. So that, that is the kametz hatu. That's, that's the only way I was able. So, but this, this word, hakmah, Hokma. Hokma. The accent still on the end. Yes. Ma. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Cole is another example of a Kamet's Hatuf. Uh, yeah, okay. Cole, it always says Cole. Oh. Yeah. Okay, then let's see. The the cough. The, it doesn't have to have the Dagesh to be pronounced correct. Hoch. Yeah, normal, normally. Normally. Hoch. Yeah. Hoch. Because they say. They yeah, say they're, they're saying. Say, yeah, you're right. And also, they said that this um, 
this letter at the beginning, they said the letter was pronounced K. In uh, the alphabet. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So. It says Chet is K. Um, what page are you on? Up, up what is K. What page are you on? Uh, one. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they don't. They don't make a distinction. Yeah, but okay. Look at page three, though. When it has a degesh, see the cough with a degesh is as in K, oh, as in goodness. king. But without the degesh, is so that's what I always understood. But then they have it without the dagesh, and they say could. I don't know why. I, I've always thought of it as hokma, saying hoch, more hoch, of a hokma. Yeah. Well, I missed something hoch. somewhere, because I always thought that the dagesh didn't make a difference in the pronunciation. It does in some. Sometimes. sometimes. The tav, it doesn't, because we, we don't say the th anymore. But in the cough, it does, and the bet, it does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Those, so if it has a dish, it's like a cuh. If it doesn't have one, it's cough. Yeah. When I'm reading Torah, whether it has a dagesh or not, sometimes I don't think it. I don't think if you hear the cantor, or the, the if you hear right. it read in the synagogue, you really don't, don't hear the difference. Is there always going to say bud or bud? Yeah. So according to whether it has a dagesh. Right. Now, and, and so this is what I'm saying. My main concern is that you recognize and able to read the Hebrew, because that's our goal. Like we it. want to read it, and we want to learn more about Hashem and his character and his ways. See, I can't read it as well as he does. But I, I mumble through the Bible, the Hebrew <laughs> Bible. But the whole point is, like what you're teaching us with the different uh, tenses and things, is to know is it single or is it plural? Yeah. You know, so that I can figure out, well, how many or what is this mm -hmm. to help me understand the, the meaning of it? Yeah, word. to me, there's, there's a lot more um, difference in, yes, recognizing the tense, mm -hmm. recognizing whether it's singular or plural, you know, than exactly how things are pronounced. Okay, let's go on. The furtive patak, we know what that is. And quiescent olive, that's normally found in um, roots that end in an olive. And then you find the form. But um, hata, sin, um, hatat, you see the quiescent olive. Uh, well, Really, what? the olive. The olive, yes, is, is quiet. It's considered to be a constant with reference to the rules of syllabification. The word should be divided in. Mm -hmm. Well, you, they're saying that the text C is doubled, so that's what they're doing. But you, normally, you have consonant vowel, consonant vowel. And there's no vowel under the olive. That's why they call it a quiescent okay. olive. Okay, all right, no vowel. That's no See, vowel. that makes sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the Hebrew diphthong, and we call these duels. Uh, Shemaim, bite. Well, actually, that one's bite is just house, but... It's pronounced as one syllable. Um, okay, that is now again. 
We just went through three chapters, but it's also three chapters worth of vocabulary. So, and this, this book is hard to keep up with the vocabulary. So we need to just go back over the vocabulary. I got three yeah. twelves, uh, 12 as the vocabulary. Go through that and make sure I remember yeah. that. Okay. Okay, chapter four. <clears throat> Now we get to nouns, and um, you have your masculine nouns, your feminine nouns, and then notice the dual. The dual is ein. You know, um, it's like susain, two horses, to to retain. Pardon me? Yeah, you have so susim. Susim is plural horses, but if there's two of them, then it's susain. Uh, it's like a nine or a nine. You have eyes. You have two eyes, you dine, two hands. Okay. Um, here they tell you the endings, the normal endings for uh, singular or plural. Normally, nouns that end in Tav normally are feminine, but like bite for house, that's masculine. So that's an exception. But you can see all of these endings here. And then the plural, ot and im. Of course, avot is an exception. It's a masculine plural. And then you have the dual. Okay, um, next page you have the masculine singular and plural, feminine singular and feminine plural, and the then... Feminine dual nouns end in e, i, i. Uh, yes, it doesn't e. matter with it's the dual, dual, right. That'd be wow. like common. Yeah, yeah. You 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 don't find that very often at all. Because it would have uh, to be two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it would help to explain it if I ever see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you say, why on earth does that happen? No. <laughs> right now. Okay. Then you have exceptions to the rules and. Again, Eretz, Ear, Eben are all feminine. And let's see. Yod. It says whether a noun like Yod is masculine or feminine, it's pluralized. Oh, I see. It makes no difference in meaning. Okay. Uh, and then we have the exceptions, um, and of course the more examples of duels are Mitzrayim, Yerushalayim. Uh, well, does that mean that Yad can be either Yadot or Yadim? God? No, yeah, Yad. Yad. Oh, Yad. Yad. Um, no, it, it just says... It says whether a noun like Yod is masculine or feminine. Okay. Whether plural or Or just or giving feminine. an example. It makes absolutely, absolutely no difference with going to this. Whether, whether, whether a Yod. thing is masculine or considered <clears throat> grammatically masculine or feminine doesn't make a difference 
and they English, need it. The, yeah, the way you say it. Um, in their glossary, it has that Yod is feminine singular. And it's Yod. Yeah, I, it is. It is. Now I gotta find my place again. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, chapter four. Yeah, that was an odd. Why did they use that? <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Yeah, the, again, you have a dot or a dot. Again, you have defective spelling. And. Um, You know, I was reading in Jeremiah, the half Torah, and just this defective spelling. He was spelling a lot of words differently. Yes, because, uh, and you'll like, notice too in the Psalms, lot. yeah, and even David, there will be yeah, a defective David. spelling of David. There are a number of different spellings once you get into some of the prophets. Okay, and then it talks about when you make things plural, a lot of times, like devar, the word for word, uh, it becomes devarim, and you have a shava in the first consonant. It's uh, called a pro-pretonic reduction. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do we have to remember that? No. Um, Just get used to, to, this is how you pronounce it. You yeah. Know, to actually say it, so. Now some words like it says uh, on 33, note that nouns with a, an unchangeable long vowel in the first syllable will not experience that reduction. For example, star, kokav, will be kokavim. It does not reduce to a shva. I'm at four. Point eight point two, talking about making things plural. Eight two. Uh, yeah. Okay, pluralization. Okay. Okay, right I'm here. Cool call. okay, right here. Yeah, that's it. Okay, and then we go pluralization of segalit nouns. Then your accent goes to the end like melech, melechim, nefesh, nefashot, nefashot, excuse me, and sword, cherev, goes to haravot. So you, you do have the reduction and the accent change to the last syllable. When you make it plural. Yes. And geminate nouns like am or lev, uh, <clears throat> am goes to amim with a dagesh forte. And uh, what means? Geminate. It has Gemini, to. Um, yeah. It right. The the last consonant doubles. Like Lava. Okay, but the, what they're they're calling it geminate nouns. Does that mean just two consonants, as in Gemini twins? That's where they got the word. <laughs> I don't know. That's what it looks like. It may be. Um, but you'll just have a dagesh forte in those to show the uh, double consonant. 
like, and then you have uh, Hulk comes Hukim with a double Kuf. Uh, I'm on page 34, which is 4.5. says the twin has reappeared not as a consonant but as a Gagesh forte. And then irregular pluralization, and these are just ones that you have to recognize. Uh, ish to anashim, isha to nashim, and ear to arim, av, avot, Bait, Batim, Daughter, Bat, Banot, Son, Ben, Banim, Day, Yom, and Yamim. Okay, so those, let's see, our class is supposed to go from 12.30 to 2. Okay. Let's see, and this is the summary. One, one good thing about this book is the summaries at the end of each chapter. So you can kind of review what the chapter was about by just reading, rereading the summary at the end. Then again, you have a long list of vocabulary words. Oh. All right, let me see. These, uh, in this book, the after the vocabulary, they usually have articles of some sort. For example, this one has kinship terms and God's relationship with his people. These are often very interesting articles yeah. and uh, highly. Well, mine says in articles. Uh, it does. talking about additional information rules. Yeah, there's about. also, oh, yours skips the article then. And huh. what, what does that say? The work of William Tyndale. Oh, well, that, you have that, and we don't have the work of William Tyndale. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Right. But I won't. I won't. It won't bother me too much that I don't have what you got on there. <laughs> okay. Um, so for next, well, we still have a half hour. Um, in your workbooks now, I'm not sure how much different your workbook. Yeah, let's going see how much to be. Um, of course you the, can do, I would suggest doing, <laughs> uh, now three would be very good. Exercise three and doing the syllables. Uh, that's good practice, although it's really long. Yeah. So, um, but if you wanted to like try to do some. Of those, and then do uh, four. And four. yes, four, four would be good. You need to recognize uh, the gender and number. Okay, and then the segalas. We won't, we won't necessarily go over 
all of this. Uh, if you have any questions about it, as we progress, I will assign definite things for you to do, and those we will go over. Um, but these you want us to just... Yeah, do what you feel would be good for you to do, uh, as far as review. And, um, okay, the definite article and conjunction bob. Okay, that is chapter five. We call it the reversing Bob. And, uh, they call it. Well, you have the conjunctive, which means and, you know, like used with a noun. Yeah. And then they have, I forget what they call the reversing Bob. I, have to, I didn't get that far in my review. Theirs is mainly used as a conjunction meaning and. Right, they got the conjunction. And it can be used for but, can it? Bob can be used for but at the beginning. Well, it can. You, you have to go by the context. Okay. And again, that's kind of the determination of the translator. You know, whether it's but or then or Although there are specific, and, and you need to realize that, that there are specific words that mean but and then. And so just remember that when you see that conjunction bob there, even though this translation may have but, it's not necessarily a but unless it has the actual word okay. or but, okay? okay? Um, but it's just normally and. Yes. And? And yes. And and normally and. and. Pardon me? Exclamation like. Now, oh, there is a word for unless. There's a lot of reading with this, isn't it? Yeah. A lot of reading. Okay, I Girls can't. leave me alone. <laughs> I don't remember what it is offhand. Okay, any questions? We may just stop there and then start at um, chapter five. Let's see. Well, we actually talked about the definite article and how to double it. Oh, here, here on 5.5 5 is what we talked about with the mem. It says, uh, article with initial yod or mem, with few exceptions, words that begin with a yod or mem give up the dagesh forte that is associated with the definite article. For example, yeladim becomes hyladim. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, um, now, with that, uh, hum, rag, rag, lean, this, this is that? Okay, we don't have that example. We have, oh, yeah, we do. Um, um, margaline, a margaline. Yeah, ha, ha, ma, ha, wait a minute. Ha, 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 ha,
Lee. Amraga Lee. Yeah. So the so the gash in the gimel is a, yes. You, well, you have the shva is pronounced. It's vocal. Well, you're pronouncing the, the mem too at the front? Ham ragalim. See, they're not doubling the mem there. Yeah, ham ragalim. It says that the gesh forte is given up, but the patak vow, a short a, is not lengthened. This is similar to the issue of virtual doubling with gutturals mentioned above. Notice that the Shiva under the first consonant of the noun <coughs> remains a vocal Shiva by analogy. But see, now modern does both. Um, see, I think that's where. Uh, Sometimes you'll say ham evarak or ham varak. You'll see the doubling. Okay, about changing. Yes, and like ha'aretz, it's eretz, but then it becomes ha'aretz. And am with a patak, but it becomes ha'am with a kamets. And gan, garden, becomes hagan. So these are things, you know, if you were going to teach it in a college or whatever, yes, then learn, <laughs> learn all these. But just, just be able to recognize. Uh, I'm not concerned that you memorize all these differences. So there's exceptions anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's always exceptions. <laughs> then you have the con conjunction. Yes, uh, it says before most consonants, the conjunction will appear as vav. And it occurs this way about 50% of the time two circumstances, which, ah, we already know that rule. The bump rule, and if the first letter has a Shabba already. So these are the rules. Now also, and we didn't really talk about this, but look at number three. Number three, it says, before a reduced or hotep vowel. For example, the word dream is chalom, and it has a chet with a hotep patak. Well, if you want to say and, and, um, it says and a dream, then you have to put you put whatever vowel is under that hatef uh, consonant, like here it's a patak. So you put that under the vav. The vav. Yes. Okay. And uh, look down at emet. See, there you have a hatef sigol. Right. So you put the sigol under. A and again, we're not going to be doing all this writing, but I want you to recognize why it's like that. It's because of the Hatef vow. Now, one important exception, it says, is Elohim, and then you put they Elohim. It becomes they Elohim. And that's quite often, so you need to recognize that Velohim. Sometimes it says the Baal may have a commence under it. Like with sheep, zone, you would have Vav zone. Or with bread, Lechem. Valechem. 
a lot of exceptions. <laughs> Lots of exceptions. Well, we've done five, so we can just yeah. do six next time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So again, do, you have three weeks. Yeah. Do what exercises you feel would be helpful to you. Okay? The 23rd, 23rd, 23rd will be our next one. That's good. We wouldn't have got through six chapters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did real good. Okay, uh, John, would you lead us in prayer, please? Oh, I did have to lead it for everything. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time that you have given us. Thank you for helping Donna. And Lord, give her a strong voice. It's a lot for her to talk all these hours. Uh, heal her vocal cords and let her be able to continue with her praising you, Father, with her voice. And we just, uh, John and I, thank you for providing this for us. And we pray that you will write all this information in our brains that we can recall it. Give us recall. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen.